The name tore through Felix like the blade of a knife. It was a name that stretched across the history books like an ever suppurating scar. Vlad von Karstein, the first of the bloody counts of Sylvania, the being that had brought death to the very walls of Aldorf and shattered the armies of the empire with an ease that the servants of the dark gods envied. The nightmares of childhood spun through his mind's eye, bringing with them a cold, wet fear, which settled about him like a cloak, strangling thought and courage in its embrace. He wanted to shout a denial, to hurl curses, but no sound came out. As Felix watched, each of the six necromancers pulled a plain-looking amulet from somewhere about their person. Scratched into the surface of each was the same symbol Felix had seen on the ghouls earlier. That symbol, he said. What is it? It's ancient Lamian, Norris said, apparently happy to lecture. It's quite interesting. In essence, it is... Our master's initials, Russ said. Stop talking to the sacrifice, Norris. Felix fell silent. His arms were held by two of Russ's men. No one was paying attention to him, however. All eyes, even those of the ghouls, were fastened on the skull in Helm's hands. Felix's hassles bristled as a cold breeze wafted in the cabin, causing the torches to whip and dance wildly. Three of the necromancers were chanting, their voices growing louder and louder. Ilsa got closer to Felix. Can you feel it, her Jaeger? Dar, the wind of darkness, it flows strongly through these tunnels and has since Manfred von Karstein used them to raid into the Empire centuries ago. She stroked his hair and Felix shied away. She giggled and he shuddered. You will make a fine sacrifice, she said. Your blood will be the gate and the key, and then he will return, even as was foretold. A sickly light had suffused the skull and it bobbed and shifted on Helm's upraised palm like a sack of rats as the chant became wilder. Felix wanted to look away from it, but he was unable to. The skull rose into the air, its fleshless jaws clattering in an almost comical fashion. The necromancers raised their hands as if pushing it upwards. They strained, as if the skull were far heavier than it appeared. Helm muttered fiercely, eyes closed, his arms thrust above his head. The others watched as the skull began to rotate quicker and quicker, until suddenly it stopped and bent low, as if it were attached to an overlong neck. Felix winced as something that was less than a voice than a stab of cold pain flowered in his mind. It was asking a question, and he was glad it wasn't directed at him. Russ stepped forwards, his fingers dancing nervously on the pistols. You know who we are, man, he said. And you know what we want. Where is the ring of the von Karsteins? Felix shifted slightly. His guards paid no attention, being preoccupied by the entity before them. Felix looked around, hoping to see something, anything, that would help him out of this situation. There were plenty of weapons available, but even if he could grab one, it would only be a matter of time before he was overwhelmed. That was, if Rust didn't simply shoot him out of hand. Answer me, man, Rust shouted, face going red. We bind you thrice and forevermore by your bone and name. Answer us. A twitching, dying ghoul plummeted into the center of the cavern, landing in a heap. Gasps of alarm and curses filled the air, and men drew swords as a burly, bloody shape appeared on a high ledge. Felix looked up, his face breaking into a wild grin. If it's an answer you want, traitor, I'll be glad to give you one. Godric shouted, gesturing with his axe. Godric, you're alive, Felix said, relief flooding him. Water and stone and overgrown vermin are no death for a slayer, Godric snarled. Maybe you prancing fools can do better. With a loud war cry, Godric took a running leap off the ledge as the other ghouls closed in on him. He landed lightly for a being of his bulk, axe unimpeded by either the skull or the torso of the guard it cut through on the way down. 
As the body fell in two halves, Godric snatched Felix's blade from the ground where it had fallen and sent it sliding towards him. Here, manling, join in the fun. And then, laughing, Godric waded into the fray as men and ghouls moved to bring him down. Felix lunged, wrapping his bound wrists around Ilsa's neck. The young necromancer hissed like a cat and elbowed him in the gut. Felix bent double, narrowly avoiding the blade that she pulled from within her dress. She stabbed at him again, and he caught a blade in his bonds. With a swift tug, the ropes frayed and parted, and his hands were free. She shrieked in rage and flew at him, but he stepped aside and scooped up Karagul. He flung aside his scabbard just in time to meet a downward strike from one of the black-hooded men. This man was strong, and had a wild gleam in his eye that Felix didn't like. He booted him in the groin and leapt past him, heading for the sound of Godric at work. Despite all that they'd been through this evening already, the Slayer did not seem tired in the slightest. Indeed, he was as energetic as Felix had ever seen him, bounding back and forth like a typhoon of destruction, tackling any opponent which either got too close or didn't scramble aside fast enough. His horrible weapon looped out and spun, cleaving air, stone, steel, muscle and bone alike. The stones beneath his feet were slippery with the axe's leavings, and Felix fought to keep his balance as he made his way to Godric's side. Glad to see you up and about, Mandling. Had enough of a rest then, Godric said. I could ask the same of you, Felix said, parrying a strike meant for Godric's back. The last I saw you, you were busy with the bats. Aye, devils in the air, but not very good in the water, Godric said. Most of them drowned or flew away before I could get to them. Oh, what a shame, Felix said. Yes, Mandling, Godric said, lopping off a clawed hand as it scratched at his beard. It is. He then looked around. Now, where's that traitor? I'd like to decorate his skull for what he has done. I didn't realize that you were that friendly with Olaf and the others, Felix said. I wasn't, Godric snarled. But that black-hearted bastard burned down the best tavern in Wurtbad. A gunshot sounded, echoing above the roar of voices and Godric's crest wobbled as the bullet plucked a few stiffened bristles loose out of his scalp. Godric spun and Russ danced away, eyes wide and his mouth twisted in a snarl. Kill him! Kill him! the necromancer howled. Yes, kill me, Godric said. He leapt at Russ. But first... Felix cracked a ghoul in the face with his elbow, knocking the monster down. He saw Russ scrambling backwards, Godric advancing on him implacably. The necromancer threw aside the useless pistol and raised a hand. Strange syllables spewed out of his lips, and black lightning crackled. It spilled across the upraised edge of Godric's axe, lashing out at the men rushing to attack him from either side and causing them to topple in clouds of blood. Russ's expression turned comical. In truth, Felix knew that he and Godric were only alive because the enemy's numbers were working against them in the confined space of the cavern. As soon as the other necromancers regained their senses, they surely employ whatever magics they possessed against the Slayer, and then Felix in turn. He didn't like to think about his odds without Godric at his side. They needed an edge. His eyes lit on the still hovering skull. The other necromancers were still shouting questions at it but the spectre they had summoned seemed either unable or unwilling to cooperate. Godric, we need to get that skull, he shouted. Godric, intent on Russ, did not appear to hear him. The axe thudded into the rock between the necromancer's legs and Russ scrambled up. Godric made to bring him down, but he was bowled over by a trio of ghouls. Felix cursed and headed for the floating skull and the questioners. If he could get his hands on it, maybe it would be enough to trade it for their lives. But before he could reach it, however, he felt the floor beneath his feet begin to tremble with the sound of booted feet, ringing on the stone. Felix's heart leapt. Maybe someone had roused the watch. 
Felix cut down a gibbering ghoul and turned to face the direction of the sound, a sloping tunnel. A shape burst into the cavern, beheading a ghoul as it came. His words of welcome turned to ash in his mouth, though. It was not the watch. The man, if a man it was, wore bloody clothes and looked as if he had undergone the tortures of the damned. Red-eyed, the being was followed by several others like it, all of them stinking of the river and slaughter, as well as a host of dead men. The zombies were of every description and condition, many of them smelling of smoke. In that moment, Felix felt as if every drop of blood in his veins had turned to ice. The red eyes of the pack found him, examined him, and dismissed him, the way a hawk would dismiss a singularly unappetizing mouse. Felix found himself unable to move, frozen in place by that glance. He was not alone. Throughout the cavern, bodies stilled their motion. Even Godrek, normally as sensitive as a stone, had paused in his rampage. Every eye was on the newcomers. The only sound was the hiss of flames and the whimper of frightened souls. The latter backed away from the red-eyed beings, crouching and whining like beaten dogs. A single word burst into Felix's brain at the sight of the newcomers. Vampire. These were the blood-drinking heirs to the wickedness of Sylvania, with far less distance between him and them than he would have ever liked. He had fought their kind before, but to see this many of them in their terrible glory, and so close, was terrifying indeed. He swallowed and looked at Godrek. The temperature in the cavern had dropped, and the torches flickered as if a dark wind had them in its clutches. The dead shifted and stumbled about the newcomers, or in some cases, crawled. One of these struggled to a sitting position, its shattered spine sticking through its tattered back. One of the red-eyed women stroked the dead thing's head, as if it were a faithful hound. No! Hell moaned, breaking the silence. The voice of the necromancer was heavy with despair. He raised his crooked hand protectively. What is it? Russ snapped. What is it? What's going on, Helm? He is here! The old necromancer groaned, eyes bulging. He is here. Yes, something hissed. Felix shuddered at the sheer malignity evident in the voice. It seemed to come from nowhere and everywhere at the same time. The torches flickered again. Yes, Helm, you old wretch. The shadows cast by the torches shifted like creatures preparing to pounce. Did you think I was dead, Helm? A sound like rattlesnakes slithering across the rock followed the words. Felix's nerves felt strained to the breaking point. Something rustled in the darkness of the cave ceiling. Did you hope that Stillman had failed? It purred, and Felix felt a chill caress his spine. Did you hope that I would remain buried in history and mud? The rock walls echoed with the scrape of claws. The tread of heavy unseen boots circled them all like the pacing of an unseen animal. You sent assassins to kill him, to stop him from bringing me back to feel the kiss of the carrion winds. Because... why? Were you afraid that I would stop you, Helm? No, false one, Helm said. No... You are too late. We have summoned the specter of Felix Munn, and he will give us the location of that which we seek. The other members of the Charnel Congress moved into a protective circle around the old man. Oh, you mean Vlad's little ring, then? The horrible voice said, its words echoing. It chuckled, and Felix thought that he caught a flash of crimson in the darkness. I thought that might be why you stole those brittle old bones. A very good plan. Or it would have been, if that skull had actually belonged to the thief. What? Utrecht said. The necromancer and his fellows all had weapons out of their hands, prepared for sorcerer's gestures. Felix held his own blade up. The shadows seemed to be creeping closer, 
coiling about the fang-like stalagmites. Felix saw that Godric stood stock still, his one eye moving steadily, as if following something that only he could see. Could the slayer see whatever or whoever it was that their opponents were so terrified of? Did you honestly think that I would allow the bones of a man who knew what man knew, a man who I killed precisely because of that knowledge, to fall into the hands of my enemies? The voice hissed. Surely you were wondering why that dead thing hadn't answered you yet. You mean... Helga gasped. The cavern echoed with foul laughter. The shadow seemed to ripple with the sound of it, and the ghouls set up a wail. As the laughter faded, the voice continued. Mun's remnants are in a place known only to me, and the secret of Vlad's bauble is buried with him. And you traitors, you deceivers all, you will pay for your trespasses against Manfred von Karstein. Quicker than Felix's eyes could follow, the shadow solidified into a tall and cadaverous shape. It had sharp, corpse-like features, and a smile like the grin of a shark. Razor blade teeth surfaced from behind thin lips as it lunged, the fat long blade of its sword driving through Norris's narrow body and pinning the man to a dripstone like an insect to a board. The other necromancers scattered in shock and terror, scrambling for safety among their minions. The creature jerked the weapon free of Norris and the stone and turned to face the others, smiling like a tiger. Its eyes narrowed into fiery slits. Kill them, it snarled. The zombies jerked into motion and barreled into the stunned ghouls and black-clad cultists, and the cavern suddenly rang again with the sound of battle. Manfred was stalking through it all unconcerned. The ghouls shied away from him, and a few human servants who dared close with him were swept aside like leaves in a hurricane. Felix had the impression that few living things could match this creature in the physical realm. He had seen the hideous strength of the abominable warriors that served chaos, and knew that even a champion among them would have difficulty facing a vampire. No, not just any vampire. THE vampire. Manfred von Karstein was the purest incarnation of that horrible word. The shadows seemed to cling to him as he waded into his enemies, and Felix felt the urge to flee, to run away into the darkness and throw himself into the stir, and let the river take him away from this madness. So paralyzed by fear he was, that he almost missed the telltale hiss of something closing by. Felix forced himself to move, and threw himself away as a female vampire lashed out at him lazily, her mouth full of fangs. He hit the stone hard and rolled onto his back, blocking the second blow as it came. The strength of the blow left his wrist aching, and he jabbed a boot into her gut, all thoughts of chivalry cast aside. She snarled and grabbed at his leg, and her hand vanished in a spray of blood. The vampiress shrieked and reeled as Godric knocked her down and separated her head from her shoulders. Things have gotten complicated, Godric, Felix gasped, as the dwarf hauled him to his feet. No, Godric said, a berserk light dancing in his eye. The solution is still the same, manling. Kill all of them and let Grogni sort them out. Manfred expected the necromancers to run away, but instead they attacked. He felt the threads of dark magic coalescing as they hurled their spells at him. He spat a word, and the stabbing tendrils of black lightning clashed with his hastily summoned defenses, driving him back a step. You should have stayed in the grave, usurper, one of the necromancers, the one called Ilsa, shrieked. Withering words followed, and Manfred snarled as he felt them tear at him. And you should have stayed hidden, Manfred said, grabbing for her. She screamed as he bore her to the ground, fangs sinking into her pale throat. He smashed her head into the floor as he tore her throat out. One of the vampires screamed as it was turned into a walking torch. It fled into the melee, setting zombies afire in its blind blundering. Tendrils of human hair seized him, jerking him up and down and flinging him back. Manfred clawed at the animated substance. 
Helga cursed and gestured, her stole of living hair tightening its grip upon the struggling vampire. Manfred set his feet and began to pull her towards him. A rapier pinked him in the neck and he twisted. Snarling at the fat necromancer, Utrecht, as he danced away, face red with hatred and fear. I was satisfied to send your ancestors scrambling for rat holes, but I'll exterminate you fools, roots and branch now. Manfred said, freeing a hand and gesturing towards Utrecht, who grabbed his chest and screamed. The necromancer toppled as the internal organs began to bloat and fuse within the body. Even at their peak, the charnel congress were no match for me. He turned and snagged the lengths of animated hair that now sought to dig into his skin. With a roll of the shoulders, he ripped it free of Helga's grip and tore it apart. Tossing the shredded stole aside, he dived at her. Cold flames struck at him, causing his flesh to bubble, and Manfred winced. Forcing past the pain, he tweaked the skines of magic, cutting off the spell at the source. Helm staggered back, eyes bulging. Manfred slapped Helga to the ground and advanced on Helm instead. What did you fools think was going to happen here, eh? Did you think you'd simply resurrect Vlad? And then what? What? Days of wine and roses and babies spitted over roasting fires? Vlad von Karstein is the wind of death made manifest, Helm babbled trying to beat aside Manfred's will and resume control of the winds of magic roaring in the cavern. It is our duty to bring him back. We have sought his ashes scattered across the empire. Manfred lunged and caught Helm by the throat. With contemptuous ease, he tore the locket from the necromancer's neck and held it up, examining it. So I see. And you thought to bring him back. Even as Stillman brought me back. Tell me, did you think he would say thank you? Admittedly, you weren't part of the picture, someone said. The pistol barked, and Manfred shrieked as the bullet took him in the spine, piercing a weak point in his armor. He flopped to the ground, momentarily nonplussed. Russ, his clothing torn and bloody, tossed aside the smoking pistol and drew two more. Silver bullets, usurper, in case you were wondering. I'll put you back where that fool Stillman found you. Manfred laughed and wriggled like a snake, launching himself off the floor and striking, teeth clamping down on Ross's hand. The necromancer yelped and fired the other pistol, taking Manfred in the shoulder. Manfred gathered his legs under him and swatted the opponent to the ground. Oh, how the once mighty have fallen, he said pinning Russ in place with a boot at the chest. He crushed the man's pistol and looked down at him. Your magics are so weak, you must rely on these toys. Would you kill me with bullets and swords and scalps? What about an axe, then? Gotrek said, charging at Manfred. Manfred turned and caught the axe blade between his palms with a grunt. I forgot about you he said from between clenched fangs. I will not make that mistake again. Glad to hear it, Lord of Maggots, Godric said, his muscles bulging as he forced the axe towards Manfred's face. The vampire bent back for a moment and then began to meet the slayer's strength with his own. Manfred caught a glimpse of Jaeger circling them and he hissed in frustration. These two were proving obstinate to his survival. They had been adequate distractions, but now it was time for the finish. You cannot defeat me, Troll Slayer. I have fought legions of your stunted kin, after all, and all of them with better reason to kill me than you. Maybe, but if you knew anything about me and mine, Leech, you'd know that your defeat is a bonus. Gotrek roared veins writhing on his arms and neck as he threw every bit of strength into forcing the axe down. Manfred blinked as the blade slid through his palms and his shape dispersed into a mist as the axe dropped down. He screamed as whatever magic had been wrought into that blade struck at him, even in the mist shape, and he reformed a few feet away, black blood dripping from between his fingers. 
You, you hurt me, he said, barely able to believe it. He had known the axe was a fell thing, but knowing and feeling were different things. He staggered, shaking his head. He looked around. The situation had deteriorated while he was distracted. The cavern was lit as brightly as a summer afternoon by the burning remnants of the zombies, and those that were left were being finished off by the ghouls and the few remaining human servants of the Charnel Congress. As he watched, the last of the fledgling vampires was pinned to the ground by several swords. No, take him, Russ shouted, pointing. Manfred turned as a number of the surviving ghouls plowed into him, knocking him down. Magic thrummed in their spindly limbs, and he knew at once that a flesh working had been cast. He roared and thrashed, trying to free himself, but it was too late. 